Hey everybody, my name is Nicole. Welcome to the Pine Cottage. Today we are going to tackle my closet back here. It is a complete disaster. I have started, I don't know if you can see, I have started emptying it out and I have stuff everywhere all over my room. So I'm gonna make my bed and I'm gonna finish clearing this out and then we are going to go through everything and I'm going to get rid of some things because while well, I have been working with a capsule wardrobe, I have accumulated some things over time and I need to declutter again. I've been using a capsule wardrobe system for, I don't know, a good five or six years now and it really does work well for me. It's not something that you just do one time and you're done. You have to continually declutter and keep it curated as time goes on. So I'm gonna work on that today and bring you along for the process. <music> don't know what a capsule wardrobe is this is not a video explaining how to make one or what the advantages are of one even though I might touch on it a little bit if you want a video that's going to teach you how to create a capsule wardrobe I just suggest that you put in capsule wardrobe in the search engine on YouTube because there are a ton of videos on YouTube that I've watched over the years to help motivate me and to learn what kind of different capsule wardrobes I can make and how to curate them and to personalize them to my needs. So today's video is just to show you how I do it and mostly how I declutter to kind of tidy it up a little bit every year because you can build your capsule wardrobe the first time but it doesn't stay that way. Eventually your small capsule wardrobe grows to something that's a little bit less manageable. For me, the reason that I started using a capsule wardrobe was because it just helps my brain. Growing up, I remember being completely paralyzed by my closet every morning, getting ready for school, just staring at it like, what, what am I going to wear today? I don't even know. I was overwhelmed by all the choices and the variety. And I mean, any teenage girl likes to shop. So I had just a ton of clothes, even into my early 20s. And I remember, you know, shopping with my friends and buying these inexpensive um, fast fashion pieces that you know you didn't want people to see you in the same outfit twice just ridiculous things like that and as I've grown and learned more about how my brain works and how the fashion industry works and how consumerism works just growing up experience taught me that this is the best thing for me. So if it's not your thing, I totally get it. But if it's something that you're interested in and you haven't tried it, I'm just going to share with you kind of how I go about it. So basically, I don't have a number in my head of how many pieces of clothing I want to have in my closet. Some videos that you watch will tell you pick four tops, pick four bottoms, pick two pairs of shoes, whatever. Like there's a number for everything. I don't really do that. I think about my lifestyle, the places that I go, the things that I have to get dressed for, and then I kind of let it morph into what it is. I want ideally all of my clothing to fit on a small clothing rack so i'll show you in my closet i have a small black clothing rack i want all of my hanging items to be able to hang on there comfortably if it's too stuffed if i have multiple pairs of pants or multiple shirts that i see that i'm not wearing throughout the year then they need i need to reevaluate and something needs to go I'm at the point right now, it's March, we've been through this winter, I had purchased some things last summer that I've, I tried and they didn't fit me well for whatever reason, I, I, find, I found myself not reaching for them. 
I will say a, a lot of what goes into your wardrobe depends on a lot of things, right? Our weight goes up and down. Our, um, how we feel, especially as women throughout the month changes depending on where we are in our menstrual cycle. So I think that a wardrobe is very personal to you. And for me, my wardrobe really needs to reflect how I'm feeling on that day. <laughs> and that changes throughout the month. So I have some looser fitting, cozier clothes. I have a couple pieces that I can wear to church on weekends. I have obviously my work uniform. And then I have like if I were to go out to dinner, pieces that I could wear for that. I'm not a super fancy person. I don't get dressed up a lot. Not that I don't enjoy getting dressed up. That's just not part of my lifestyle. I don't go to a lot of parties or dinners or things like that. And when I am going out to dinner or to someone's house for a nice get together, I have no problem wearing jeans with a pair of heels and a nice shirt. That's just always been my comfort zone. I'm not a very big dress person because of the shape of my body. I feel like I look better in pants and a top. I think it's really important to be comfortable in your body and to wear clothes that reflect that comfortability. I'm not wearing things that are accentuating parts of my body that I'm not comfortable with, nor am I wearing clothes where I'm like in a paper sack. I want to I want to look nice in the things that I wear. I'm not looking to dress like a certain person or I'm not following any trends. I think that's a really important point to make when you're talking about a capsule wardrobe because you're letting go of trends. You may find pieces that kind of lean trendy. They might have a trendy aspect to it, like maybe one type of neckline or collar is really in right now. But I would encourage you to choose pieces that you like, regardless of whether or not they are trendy, because this is something that you're going to have over years. These clothing items that I have are, are things that I've had for literal years, maybe even a decade, some of them. They're higher quality pieces so that they last longer, so that they do well with a lot of washing and drying because I'm not hand washing them unless they're my hand knits and I'm throwing them in the dryer. You really want to pick high quality pieces so my fast fashion days are over but I will say I very rarely purchase my clothes at full price. Every once in a while if I know there's a specific thing that I need and I can't find it secondhand then I will pay full price for it, but 95% of the time, I'm thrifting my clothes. My daughter and I, my mom and I, we all enjoy thrifting and finding clothing that is very high quality that we can give a second or third life. I think that over time, I've learned that I was very wasteful in the past with my wardrobe, and I really want to do my part to have a sustainable wardrobe. Those are the main things that I wanted to say up front. I am on my phone in my closet because the tripod won't fit in here. I have a small, very small walk-in closet, so it's not huge. It's not like a big room where I can set up all my camera equipment. So I am in here right now. I just threw some bags in here, but I am gonna be going through some of my bags and you can see here is where my my file cabinet is in my camera case. Maybe I'll start with just like tops. Maybe I'll just start hanging stuff up and then I'll decide what I can get rid of. I think that might be the easiest way to do this. So let me start bringing some things back in. I'm gonna take these bags out of here because we're gonna be deciding what we're keeping and what we're getting rid of. Spoiler alert, we're keeping all three of these, but I have a lot more. This is my camping backpack. If you put capsule wardrobe in on YouTube and just start searching, you're gonna find a lot of super curated closets where maybe they have a simple color scheme of like neutrals and um, you know browns or blacks or whites and grays and those kinds of things because the idea is that you can interchange and mix and match to make different outfits out of a small number of pieces. I tend to wear a lot of neutrals. 
I do wear certain colors, so you'll see some oranges, browns, and greens in my closet, but not very many. And that is intentional because I just feel more comfortable in neutrals, black mostly. It's just an easy way to give yourself sort of a uniform. When I really narrow down my options, it just makes things easier for me when I have to get dressed in the morning. Also, you know, I'm a nurse, so I do wear a uniform to work, so it makes it really easy for me. On work days, I wear the same thing every time. When I'm home, I'm generally wearing a sweater or a sweatshirt and leggings or jeans. And when I go to church, I have one or two things that I rotate between, and also depending on the season. I'm not someone who puts away my seasonal clothes. I don't tuck my sweaters and my warm things away for the winter because I feel like in spring and in fall, it's easier to just layer and have those pieces available to me. Enough chit chat, I'm gonna start hanging some things up. Okay, I have some things hung up here and I don't think I'm gonna keep all of them. So I'm just going to kind of show you my process when I'm decluttering how I decide what I'm keeping and what I'm getting rid of. So this denim shirt is pretty much a classic staple, but just now when I was pulling it off my dresser, I did not realize that my husband, when he closed the drawer, had the shirt in there. And when I pulled it, I ripped it. This is something that I'm going to replace, but in the meantime, I really just wear it like around the house or I don't really go anywhere in it, but I can't, if I wanted to wear it out or under a sweater or something, I can't have it with a hole in it. So I'm going to keep it until I find one that I like to replace it. And I'm just going to hang it up over here. This striped shirt, I do want a striped shirt to go under that denim shirt or under a cardigan. I ordered this from Amazon and as you can see, the neckline is kind of more cream off-white yellowing. It looks kind of yellowy. And so because of the neckline, plus the neckline is kind of wide, I never wear this shirt. I do not like the way that it looks. I don't think I'm gonna keep this. This is gonna be a donate. This is just a blue striped dress shirt. I bought it secondhand and I do wear this quite a bit. So this is going to be a keep. I really think that when you're building a capsule wardrobe, at least for me, I do like higher quality pieces, but I do not like paying full price. You won't rarely find me at the mall shopping at the actual stores that sell these pieces for like twice the price. I'm a big proponent of Thread Up. It's an online thrift store, not sponsored. You get a lot of stuff from there or just our local, you know, thrift stores. I will look through pieces for as long as it takes to find the hidden gems in a thrift store. <laughs> and a lot of times around here, you can find some name brand things that people are giving away for a fraction of the cost. I'm all about that. Every once in a while, I will pay full price if there's something that I really need or I need to replace something in here that I can't find at a thrift store. Sometimes I will pay full price, but it just depends on what my budget is looking like that month and if I really want to spend the money. This is just a sweatshirt um, that I wear quite often. We do a lot of camping in the fall, spring, summer, so I just wear sweatshirts all the time. So that's a keep. This is a thrifted sweater that I found. This is one of the colors that I definitely bring in that's different from my normal black and white and gray. This olive green is one that I love. And this is a knitted sweater, but I did not knit it. I did thrift this. It's not like name brand or anything, but it's just like a raglan construction. It's very cozy, so keeping that. This shirt you guys have seen in so many videos. I wear it all the time. This is just my flannel button down shirt from Target years ago, and it serves me well, so I will be keeping it. This is another thrifted piece, and it is um, just a really lightweight sweater that I like to wear sometimes as pajamas because it's so comfortable and I just wear like a little tank top under it with some sweatpants. <laughs> I probably could wear it out and dress it up and it's, you know, perfect for spring. So I probably will do that at some point this spring. This is just a plain white t-shirt that I layer underneath things. Um, I don't really wear white on its own. I don't feel, I don't like the way that I look in just plain white. So it's always a layering piece if I wear this shirt. And I'm, I've often thought about decluttering it because I don't wear it on its own, but I feel like the minute that I give it away, 
I'm going to want to wear it again. But I really can't think when the last time I wore it is. So I'm going to leave this hanging up behind me because I think this is a maybe get rid of piece. This is another sweatshirt that I wear all the time. This is a tank that I layer with. This is just a long sleeved black shirt that looks like, is it stained? Oh no. All right, I'm gonna throw that in the wash. <laughs> and if the stain doesn't come out, it's gotta go. This is a zip up. I bought this second hand. It's true to size. It's not oversized and I wish it was. I'm gonna put it over here for now, but I don't know that it's gonna stay there. This is a sleeveless dress shirt that I never wear. I don't really care for this um, like V here and the way that I don't like these necklines. This was kind of a popular cut I feel like for a while. I'm not big on sleeveless things and if I am going to wear something sleeveless it's, it's going to be more like a tank top fit. So I don't think I'm going to keep that. I just never reach for it and I feel like it's taking up space. This is a black button down shirt that I thrifted. You know, I haven't worn it because it is, no string. It does have these this darting in the back and it just hasn't fit me very well. So this is another one that I'm gonna hold on to to see if it fits in a few months. They always say don't keep clothes that are too small for you when you're trying to like get in shape and lose weight because you can always go shopping after you lose weight. But I've lost weight and gained weight so much over the years that I would be broke if I did that every time. So I am, I do just set aside things that I know that I will fit in again because I don't want to have to go shopping again. This is a plain black tee that I wear all the time. This is a dressier shirt that ties here um, and makes like a keyhole here. And you might say that it's similar to that um, sleeveless top that I just donated, but it does have short sleeves and I do like the way that it fits. So I wear it. This is just a little black sweater vest. It is a black sweater that you guys see. I wear this a lot in videos. This is a little t-shirt dress that I wear in the summertime. This is a dress that I bought for church. It's belted. I sometimes wear it. I'm not a big dress person. I do find myself wearing it because it's easy to wear to church and just throw on some sandals. So I think I'm going to keep it. Is it a stain? Oh, sad. That's stained. Sad. Okay. Getting rid of that. And that's a dress that I used to wear a lot. I don't, I don't like this neckline either. I feel like white. Yeah. I'm not keeping this. Goodbye. These are some overalls that I like to wear in the summertime in the garden. And I know they seem silly, but they are so comfortable and cozy. And I'm keeping these babies. <laughs> They're just really comfortable. They look ridiculous. They're really, really comfortable. So keeping those babies. I have to do some laundry so that I can show you some other things. And then we'll go through pants and shorts and bags we have to go through. I have so many bags. Right now I'm going to go through my bags with you because I really have too many and I need to pare them down. And then I will show you the shoes that I have. I don't have many. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six pairs of shoes, six or seven maybe, and that's it. I hope this is interesting to you and let me start with the bags. I wanna start this whole bag section with talking about an email that I received from a company that asked if they could send me one of their bags. And this video is not sponsored by them. They simply asked if they could send me one in exchange for a honest review. So I am here to give that to you today. I am not someone as I said, I'm not like a super fancy person. I don't carry designer bags. It's just not my style. This company does advertise themselves as a luxury bag company. So at first I was like, mm, I don't know if I want them to send me a bag because I don't know that I would carry it. So I went on their website and I was looking at all the different types of bags that they had and I thought, well, I'll pick a tote bag because I can carry it to work, but it has to be large enough for me to fit my knitting in or a book. So the company that sent me a bag is 
Teddy Blake. And they sent me, or the bag that I chose, is the Vanessa Palm Palmaretto bag in the colorway Cognac. And it came in this dust bag. And I did carry it um, several days last week to see, so I could give my true opinion on the bag to work last week. And this is the bag. And it is very cute. It is made of Italian leather per their website. This little charm I, I don't really care for, so that will be coming off. But it has this little snap that keeps the straps together. It does have a shoulder strap that hooks on with these little metal grommets. It has snaps on either side so that if it's not full, you can snap these together so it just makes like a slimmer profile. Overall, there are a lot of things I like about the bag. I like the size. I am able, right now, I mean, you can see I have a magazine, a book, my pencil case. There's lots of room. I can even fit, you know, a sock, a sock bag in here. I mean, it's very roomy. There is a center zipper here for like your wallet and your keys. It's unlined. So it's um, just like suede on the inside. The quality seems very nice. Um, it is like a glazed leather on the outside. There's a couple things that I didn't care for. One, the shoulder strap, the way that it goes together are these little, um, I don't even know what you call them. They're like these little balls and they just kind of like snap, like squeeze onto these slits and they're very uncomfortable you can see they have like screws on the back so when you're wearing it especially if you're wearing it like a crossbody it's very uncomfortable those little screws dig into your shoulder so i was not a fan of that sorry i gotta move this box i won't be wearing this shoulder strap because of that and when you take off the shoulder strap then these straps are not large enough to kind of go on your shoulder it's just they're just not. So then you kind of have to carry it on your arm. And I am not an arm carrying purse person. So that was kind of, mm. I will probably still use this, you know, for like a church event or something like that. But I don't know that I will use it as my work bag every day just because of the strap situation. The hardware seems a little, a little flimsy. It doesn't seem very heavy. I, I showed in the past a sweater bag that I made and I bought like D-rings and the D-rings that I bought for the bags that I made were better quality than these. And for a company that's advertising themselves as a luxury handbag company, I just I expected a little bit more like higher quality like accessories than this. I don't really have any other negative things to say. Um, on the bottom it has these little feet so that you're not placing it on the ground. I have been given, I've been gifted like coach purses in the past that are, that were the same price point as what the, the full price of this is. And if you look on their website, I think this bag retails at like $790 or so, almost $800. And their price was like 460 or something for this bag and the coach bag that I received as, as a similar price, I will say that I felt the quality of the bag and the hardware was nicer. It had like a, a lining. This one doesn't have a lining. The zippers seemed to be, you know, smoother, just a little bit higher quality. Not that this isn't a nice quality, but do I think that it's worth $490? No, and I really don't think it's worth almost $800. So that's just my opinion. I do have a similar coach bag that's black that I got secondhand, and I've had it for a long time, and it has more bells and whistles. The center zip part goes the whole length of the bag, whereas this center zip part does not. Like if this is open, like it's very, 
the zipper only goes from, from here to here. And it, you can see this is not zipper here. So it makes it difficult to kind of fit a lot in there. This coach bag has a front pocket and it also has pockets, interior pockets on each side and it has snap closure. So this closure is just on the handles, which I like the other way better. This also, the handles are longer, so I can wear it on my shoulder, which I like. I just wanted to point that out. I am thankful for the bag. Thank you, Teddy Blake. I don't, I know that I would not purchase this on my own with my own money because of the reasons that I just said. I don't think that it's worth the money and the things that I don't like about it would make me not carry it as often as some of my other bags. Maybe this is just this style that I chose, but I really was looking on their site for a shoulder bag of this size, like a tote, and I had a hard time finding one. That's just personal preference. I just wanted to share that with you. That is a bag I will be keeping um, for now in the next, you know, uh, declutter the next go round. I don't know if it'll make the cut or not, but it, I am keeping it for this round because I like having the option of having a brown bag for spring and summer and then a black bag for fall winter. Although I'm not really a seasoned person. I keep all my clothes out the whole year round, but I do like having one of each color to choose from. So these two I will be keeping. So that's two, two bags. Another bag that I will be keeping is my backpack for camping and I like this backpack because it does not open like a normal top-down backpack. It actually opens up like this, like a suitcase. Here's my hat! You guys, I thought that I was missing this hat. I've been asking my daughter for months, where's my hat? She's like, I didn't take it, Mom. And I didn't believe her. Oh, my husband's calling me. Hello? Okay. Coconut aminos, vegan butter sticks, organic rolled oats. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Guys, I am so happy. I thought that I looked in here, but I guess not. So I have my hat back. I'm so happy. I thought I was missing it. Here's another thing. Like when you are, when you really love something in your wardrobe and it either gets worn out or gets holes in it or doesn't fit anymore or you're thinking, I need to replace it, then replace it, you know, with something that you love just as much. Coincidentally, I thought this hat was missing and I was filling some holes in my spring wardrobe this past week and I knew that in a couple months we are coming up on a vacation. So I thought, oh, I need to replace that hat. So I went online and I ordered a new one, but the one that I ordered is black. So now I will have a brown one and a black one and the eagle's a little bit smaller. You know, brown and black purse, brown and black hat. So I'm so happy to have my hat back. So, okay, back to the bag. Backpack for camping opens like a suitcase and that's why I love it so much and I will be carrying this forever. And because I have a smaller wardrobe, I am able to pack every all my clothing in this one bag, which is really wonderful. I also keep in here um, our beach bag for or pool bag, whatever. So when we go swimming, then I have a bag to carry your towels and lotion and all that stuff. So that just stays in there. That's three bags. Then of course, you guys have seen my Sandy by the Lakeside leather bag that I purchased for myself. This is like a weekend bag. This is not something that I would take camping, but if I'm just spending a couple of nights somewhere, this is a, a beautiful bag. I've also carried this to work a few times. If I'm just carrying my knitting with me for the day, if I'm visiting someone or if I'm going to my parents' house, this is something that I will reach for because I love how squishy and floppy and it smells so good. It's just one of my faves. I have four smaller bags that Three of them are crossbodies, and one is a backpack situation. 
for if I'm spending the day shopping, if we're on vacation and we're going to go do some sightseeing, something that I don't have to carry in my hands that can keep my essentials in. This one I reach for a lot, but it definitely is casual. So if it was something where I needed to dress up a little bit, that would not be the one that I would want to grab, which is why I bought this little one. So I feel like I need to keep this for those dressier occasions. That means I probably don't need this one, even though it's very cute. I really love the strap but I don't use it as much as this one because this one I feel like is just more earthy and more like my colors. So I'll see if my daughter wants this and if she doesn't, this one is going to be donated. And this is the sack. I don't know, I thrifted it. <laughs> Surprise. So this one I am not keeping. This one I am keeping. Do I need both of these? Do I need a backpack and this one? I feel like this can be dressed up because it does have these leather straps. It can go with black or brown because of that little black feature there. And I have sandals that are brown soles, like on the where your foot rests, but the straps are black. So I feel like this matches it really well. And I have used this on vacation as my like go-to bag. So I feel like I'm going to keep that. I feel like I'm going to keep this one too because this is just my like everyday when I'm home running to the grocery store bag. In the winter, I don't even carry a purse if I'm running to the store because I just put everything in my pockets. I really don't like carrying a purse if I can help it, which you're probably like, why do you have so many then? Just in case. This is where, you know, books, yarn, bags. That's where I struggle. Oh, but I'm not done. Don't worry. I have more to show you. This one I thrifted, and I thought that it would just be a really cute, um, you know, shoulder bag for whatever, shopping, church, whatnot. It is from The Gap, but I really don't like the color. It's a uh, more yellowy. A yellowy it's not like it's more yellow than caramel I feel like and I just never carry it so I'm gonna get rid of that one this is a tote bag something's floating around down here this is a tote bag that I got from Joanne fabrics one day oh my gosh tampons you can never have too many tampons and it's just polka dotted I what I used it as a beach bag it's very cute but do I need so many I, I just don't feel like I do I'm gonna think of, I'm gonna think on this one because it really is it really is cute now I have two more big weekend bags that I got from Joann's that I am not keeping because I have that Sandy by the Lakeside bag and I also have for more casual things I have my camping backpack so I am not going to keep these I'm just emptying the pockets out so this one and this one are being donated. This bag is super cute. My parents brought this back from Italy for me and it is very cute. It definitely is a winter bag. It's suede, it has like this like reptile texture to it. So it's not one that I feel like I can use in the spring or summer but still super cute and it does have a shoulder strap. So I will be keeping this, but it's not an all season bag. This is just a shopping bag, which I can use for groceries. I don't know why that's up here. This goes to something. What bag does this go to? Oh, I know what this goes to. My black purse that I have downstairs. <laughs> so if you have watched my what's in my bag video for my knitting, I also have a black leather bag with brown straps. This is the shoulder strap for that bag. Um, so I'll be keeping that bag. So you guys, I have more bags than I have shoes. Let's count. I have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not ready to get rid of this one. Nine bags. That's too many. I also have this little purse for fancy, like if you're going to a wedding or something. Um, I have not used this in probably 10 years, so there's nothing worse than giving, purging something or discarding something or decluttering something and then thinking, oh, I wish I would have kept that. You don't want to be too hasty with your decluttering. So I say hold on to it if you're unsure. Give it a good three months, six months, whatever you want to give it, and then come back around and see how you feel about it. Especially if it's if it was something that was really expensive that you would have a hard time purchasing again or finding again if you're unsure. If you're positive and you're like, no, I don't need that, that's one thing. But if you're not, I'm definitely an advocate for circling back around another time. <laughs> I'm gonna pack all this up and we're gonna move on to shorts and pants. I need a snack. I could just eat it right out of the bowl. The next thing we're going to talk about is bottoms. I feel like I feel like you don't need as many bottoms as you need tops, especially when we're talking jeans, because jeans, first of all, you don't need to wash them after every time that you wear them unless you are like working out in them or going dancing or something. I feel like the more you wear them without washing them, they last longer, they get softer, they get worked in, they, they fit and form to your body. So that's the beauty of jeans, right? So I am wearing a pair of jeans right now that I really like the way they fit my body at the present time. I think that if I do lose a couple pounds, they're going to be too big but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Since we're talking jeans, we'll go through these other ones. I bought this pair of jeans from Target. They are high-waisted jeans and they have like a frayed bottom. I really do like the bottom. I don't like high-waisted, which probably is like an unpopular opinion because high-waisted has been all the rage, I feel like, for the last several years. But because I carry my weight in the middle, High-waisted jeans are very uncomfortable for me. I had two very large babies and I have what's called diastasis recti where my stomach muscles, they were kind of pulled apart and they did not grow back together. So I can fit like almost my whole fist in between my stomach muscles, which causes my stomach to kind of protrude and people ask me all the time if I'm pregnant. <laughs> and I'm not. So high-waisted jeans are very uncomfortable for me because it puts pressure there. I also have an umbilical hernia and I don't like having something around that area of my body. Mid-rise jeans are more comfortable for me. Low-rise, you know, I, I think that trend was ridiculous. Everybody's butt crack was hanging out, so those are not for me. But the mid-rise, I, I like. Those I'm not keeping. Sorry if it's too much information. I'm just kind of spilling my guts out on the internet. But I think it's important when you're talking about clothing to reflect on how you like it to fit for your body. I think that you need to be honest about these things when you're going through your clothes like this. I have another pair of jeans that I thrifted that are a boot cut. They're mid-rise. I do like them. I like the way they fit, I should say, but I am not a fan of the color, but I'm going to keep them because they fit me really nicely right now. Once I go down a size, I'm not going to keep them because I don't like the color. And I do have a pair that is the next size down that I know they fit well. They were my favorite jeans when they did fit, and I do love the color of these ones. See, these are just a little bit well, a lot bit darker, and I like this mid-tone. It's not as light as these, or the ones that I showed you before, but it's like the perfect shade. My goal is to fit <laughs> into these because I love the way that they fit. So I'm keeping both of those. And then I have a cropped pair that is this lighter denim, and they're like capri length for spring and summer. Right now I have three pair of regular length jeans and a cropped pair and once I fit into the ones that I like, I'll get rid of the ones I'm wearing and 
these other pairs. So then I'll just have two pair of jeans, one full length and one cropped. And I think that that is sufficient for my life to have one, essentially one pair of jeans because the cropped ones I can't wear all season and I rarely will wear the full length in the summer. So I feel like that's okay to have one pair. Then I have a cropped pair of like dressier khaki pants. I also have a cropped pair of black pants that I wear all the time. And then I have this pair. If you guys have ever bought anything from this company Packed, um, I really do like the quality of these pants, but this pair is a little too big, so I'm not going to keep it. And then I have this gray pair, which I like the color better anyway, that fit fine. So I'm just going to keep these ones. Shorts. I have this pair that I bought from Target a long time ago. Dad forgot his wallet, so we couldn't. Oh, you couldn't go? Did you eat lunch or no? You want me to make you a burrito? Yes, boys. Okay. Pair. They're very soft. They're very comfortable. I wear them a lot in the summer. Um, on this order that I have coming, I ordered a pair of jean shorts, a new hat, a tan striped button down, and a new black tank for layering because my current black tank has a huge hole in the side. I have been wearing it for three years. I wear it under my scrub tops for work. I wear it under everything. So it is time to replace that. I do have a new, um, a pair of jean shorts coming and then these, so that's two. I have these khaki ones, which I don't really like the fit. Um, I have these navy ones I really don't care for. These orange ones, which I feel like it's a nice pop of color. It definitely is my pop of color that I gravitate towards, hence my orange flannel that I wear all the time. So I'm going to keep these. So that's three pairs of shorts. And I have this khaki pair, um, which the fabric is very lightweight. It dries very quickly. So it's kind of nice for swimming um, to go over like a swimsuit. So I think I'll keep these for summer. So that's four pairs of shorts. The jean shorts, black, orange, khaki. Workwear, I have two pairs of scrub pants and I have a black scrub top and a gray and a navy. I do have this color as well. I don't know which one I wanna keep. not sure. I don't need all three of these. I think I'm going to keep the gray. I'm going to get rid of these. <laughs> it feels so good to do this and to get rid of these things that, you know, you walk in your closet every day and you're like, oh, I got to get to that. You know, it's, I know I got to do that. I just don't have the time. When am I going to have a day? And then the day comes and you get into something else or you want to read a book or you want to knit. So it just feels good to get this done. <laughs> So I am feeling good about it. All right, pants are done. My clothes are still in the dryer. I'm gonna put, I match all my socks up together. All my knitted socks are in a pile over here and go through like my underwear bin and my sock bin and all that. You guys don't care to see that. And then once I get everything folded and put away, I'll show you what I'm left with in the pile of my giveaway stuff. Hi there, it's the next day. I just wanted to show you my completed rack. <laughs> I have under 30 hangers, which I feel like is a good number for me. I know I'm not super focused on number, but if I'm going to have a number, I definitely wanted it under 50. I think 10 item wardrobe is a little too restrictive. Between 20 and 30, I feel like is a comfortable number for me and for my lifestyle. I will just kind of go through and show you what I kept. I actually am wearing my other hoodie. So three, I have, th I have three sweatshirts with hoods that I kept because I wear them all the time. My daughter is actually wearing one of them today. I have the denim shirt that I showed you guys yesterday, the striped shirt, and then I had two stashed away for spring summertime. One is just a white button down and the other is a plaid button down that I thrifted. <laughs> 
that is really fun for spring and summer. This cardigan I didn't show you. It's just like a rusty orange. And I'm counting these as part of my under 30, but I really don't know that I need to. It's all my layering tanks. I have a black, a white, a gray, and an olive. And then I have a black and tan like cami. I never wear them on their own. They're always layering pieces. So I don't know that I really need to count them as part of my capsule, but there you have it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I have. And I'll just kind of show you a different viewpoint so you can see it all. It all fits nicely on my rack. Um, it's, they're not all squished together. I can easily see what I have and grab what I need. So on this side of the closet, I just have all my t-shirts rolled in here and I use them just to be comfy at home, but I also wear them to like work out. My scrubs for work and workout clothes are underneath there. On the bottom, I have my shoes and there is a pair of sandals under there. Um, I have my camping backpack. This bag needs to go downstairs. It's just a shopping bag. I have my two purses that I'm keeping hanging here. And then over here, I have a little hook where I am hanging the other three bags that I decided to keep. This is where I keep my hand knit socks and my sweaters, but underneath I also have a pile of clothes that don't fit me right now that I'm hoping will fit me soon. So I just have a small pile that I kept of smaller sized clothes that um, I keep in this drawer. So if they can't fit in the drawer, then I can't keep them and I will have to go shopping when my size changes. <laughs> I will need to go through everything again at some point, I'm sure as things come in, other things will have to go out. I'll always be in a constant state of decluttering, but this is the size of a, a wardrobe that I am comfortable with and I feel like it's manageable. I also feel like I still have choices, but I'm not overwhelmed by my choices. And because 90% or more of my clothing is thrifted, I feel good about how I've spent my money and how I am consuming in this world. So I feel good about it. And I don't know, if you have any questions about starting a capsule wardrobe, or how do you begin? Or what do some other people do? Like, is there a formula? Uh, there are so many, like I said, so many videos out there. I will link below a couple um, that I have watched in the past that I found helpful. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this or found it a little bit interesting. Um, you definitely kept me company while I did this task because it's not always one that I want to do because I make more of a mess before I actually get it clean. So I really had to give myself a little pep talk to get going, but I'm glad I did. And next week I will be doing a knitting podcast for wrapping up the end of March. So I hope to see you then. And on April 1st, we will be having our book club video. So I hope you will join me. Have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.